Hello everyone. Welcome to the next lecture on the numerical analysis. Today we will see how we can solve the system of the linear equation with the help of the LU decomposition method. Myself Dr. Harish Kar, you can follow my YouTube channel where you can find the playlist of numerical analysis. In this playlist you can see the various lecture related to the Gauss elimination, Gauss uh, Gauss Jordan Jacobi method and many more available in this playlist related to the content of your syllabus you can subscribe my youtube channel so that when i upload it my next video you will get notification in advance now what is the objective of this today's lecture so the objective is we will restricted ourselves to how we can solve the system of the linear equation with the help of the lu decomposition method lu decomposition method is also known as the factorization method once you will watch this lecture till the end then after the successful completion you will able to learn how you can decompose any non singular matrix into the lu form what is the meaning of the non singular matrix whose determinant is my non zero and second objective you the second thing you have to learn at the end of this video is how you can find the inverse of the matrix if you have the matrix this one how you can find the inverse of this matrix by using the lu decomposition make sure student we have already know that there are so many method to solve the system of the linear equation like gauss elimination gauss jordan lu decomposition jacobi gauss seidel all i have explained in this playlist right now we are explaining you how you can solve this method system of the equation with the help of lu decomposition i hope you can like and comment on this video as well now what is the objective of this what is the theme main theme of the lu decomposition method make sure whenever you have any square matrix what is the meaning of the square matrix it must be of the n cross n form it may be 2 cross 2 it may be 3 cross 3 and so on whenever you have a square matrix a then you can write that square matrix into the product of the two matrices where l is called as the lower triangular matrix u is called as the upper triangular matrix so what does it means if you have a square matrix like 1 2 3 4 4 9 7 -1 3 minus of 3 for example then you can write this matrix a into the product of the two matrix where l is my lower triangular matrix and u is my upper triangular matrix but make sure make sure you have to write the square matrix into the product of the two lower and the upper matrix provided the one condition that is all the principal minor should be non singular what is the meaning of the principal minor non singular if you have the matrix a then a11 is a non zero A one one that is a two cross two minor is a non zero three cross three principal minor will be a non zero. For example, if I say my matrix is two two four two two nine three seven four. Now clearly say the A one one is a non zero, but you can see the determinant of this is my zero. Therefore, you can never be written in the form of L into so once this condition will be satisfied then you can write the matrix a into the lower into product of the upper and that's the most important thing once you are able to identify that it will satisfied by this property then whatever the factorization you have obtained in the form of a is equal to lu it is always unique fine now in order to understand it i will explain you with the help of the three cross three matrix so let's say A is my three cross three matrix like A one one, A one two, A one three. Similarly, A two one, A two two, A two three, and last row is A three one, A three two, A three three. Now, how many unknown real numbers are there? So you can see there are the nine entries. So we have said there are the nine unknown real numbers. Now. if the factorization exists when it will be the existence when it has a principal minors when all the principal minors are determinant of all those principal minors are my non zero 
then you can write this matrix into l into u how many unknown elements in the l you can see 1 2 3 4 5 6 there are the six unknown elements in this case there are also six unknown elements so a has the nine unknown elements l has a six unknown elements and the u has again six unknown elements how many unknown elements in the lu so therefore lu has 12 unknown elements fine because if you multiply them like if you multiply l into u so this will give you a l11 u11 l11 u12 l11 u13 and so on so clearly say it has a 12 unknown element but you can see this element the right hand side has the 12 unknown elements the left hand side has my 9 unknown elements then you are unable to find all those values of the allies and the uij so then our target is to how you can determine the values of the ally and ui because it consists of the 9 unknown elements it consists of the 12 unknown elements so then you are unable to identify all values of lij and uij fine how you can identify the uniquely you are unable to identify uniquely so for that case if i assign the remaining of the elements 9 and 12 that is a 9 minus 12 that is 3 if i assign three unknown elements like one element this second element this third element this to any of the arbitrary well fine so my target is to assign any of the three unknown elements to be arbitrary values so you may assign l32 as a 4 u11 is my minus of 3 u23 is my 0 that's on totally your choice but since factorization is existence only when the principal minor is my non zero that means the best way is either i can assign all those diagonal entries are my one or i can assign all those diagonal entries as a one for the upper triangle because once i assign to be the non zero elements either you can one or two or minus four it's on your choice the main thing is it should be the non-zero so that my condition of the principal minors is a non-singular satisfied so the first question arises is how we can represent the value of the l and u since our target is to assign three unknown elements to be arbitrary so it's on your choice as i explain you so there are the two methods the first method is the called as the crowd method second is the do little method in the crowd method we have assigned all those diagonal entries of the upper triangular matrix to be the one while in the do later we have assigned the lower triangular matrix the diagonal entries one that means in this case i have assigned the uii diagonal entries as a one and you can see now it has the six unknown elements it has only three unknown elements so the total is my nine unknown elements similarly you have seen the L is 6 and 3 elements. Similarly, for this case, if I assign UI, uh, LIJ, LI is my 1, that is a diagonal is 1, and you can see it says a 6 unknown elements, it has the 3 unknown elements. So once we know L and U are this case, then we can identify the values of remaining uniquely. Now, another big question arises is once we know how we can represent LI and UJ, like of this manner either with the help of the do little or with the help of the crowd method then the big question arises is how we can find the values of the remaining lij and uij for example in this case how you i can find the values of the lij how i can find the values of the uij similarly for this case so this this big question is arises and how we can find that there are the two methods the first method is we can decompose into the two matrix and second is by using the help of Gauss elimination. So I will explain you both the method in this lecture. I hope you have understand this lecture so far and you can like and comment on this video. What is the first method is once you have 
uh, I will explain you for the case of the do liter. You can do the same calculation for the crowd method. So since it's a do liter, that means the L I I is my one. Now, what is the case of the A is equal to L U? Since I have considered the three cross three mat three cross three matrix, so what is my A? A is my A one one A two and so on. So then. Once you can, then how you can find the values of A I A? You can simply compare the coefficients on the both sides. Like if you multiply this matrix, again you will get a three cross three matrix. Then you can compare A one one. You can see the first element will be U one one. So therefore, similarly it is a U one two and it is U one three. If you multiply this matrix, it is my L two one U one one. Similarly, you can find the matrix multiplication. Then you can compare two values, and you will get the values of L I J and U I J. I will explain you this with the help of the numerical example. Find the matrix L and the U for the coefficient matrix of the system of the linear equation. You can see I can write this system of the linear equation is A X is equal to B. What is the value of the A? You can see this is called as the coefficient matrix. The coefficient of the x, coefficient of y, coefficient of z, coefficient of x, y, z, and coefficient of the x, y, and z. This is my coefficient mat. Fine. So I will explain you this problem with the help of the first method. Again, after the few hour, after the few minutes, I will solve the same problem with the help of the second method. Then, if I use the do little method, you can use the crowd method as well. What is the do little? Is l is my ones and u is my This I can substitute the value of the a by this matrix a l and u at this point. Fine. Now you can multiply this matrix. What will happen if you multiply this first row? This is u one two. This is u one three. And second row is a l two one u one one. Then l two one u one two plus u two two and so on. Once you matrix multiply, you will get. This expression. Then my target is to find the values of L I J and U I. I can equate the coefficient on the both side. Clearly, say U one one is my three, U one two is my two, U one three is my one. Again, compare the second row elements. What is my second row? Is that is L two one U one one. It is equal to one L. Two one u one two plus u two two is equal to again one, and similarly for the third end. So can you find the values of this? You can see u one one is my three. So can you find the value of the l two one? It is one over three. I can substitute the value of l two one is one over three. U one two u one two is my two. It is u two two is equal to one. So can you find the value of the u two two? It is U two two is one minus two over three, so again it is one over three. Similarly, I can find this value L two one. L two one is my one over three. U one three is my one plus U two three is equal to three. So can you find the value of the U two three? It is nine minus one eight over three. Fine. Similarly, I can equate the coefficients of the third row. You will get this value. Can you find the value of the L three one? Since U one one is my three, can you find the value of the L three one? It is two over three. I can substitute this value. L three one is two over three. U one two. U one two is my two. L three two. L three two. I need to compute. U two two. U two two. I have computed as one over three. Now from this, I can find the value of the L. Three two. It will be one minus four over three di divided by one over three. So it's a minus one over three. It's minus one. Similarly, I can substitute all these values in the last expression. You will get the right answer of this problem. Fine. Now, once you know the values of the L I and U, I can substitute. This is my L. This is my U. So what is the value of the U one one? U one one is my three. U One two. Where is the U one two? It's a two. U one three one. 
u two three, u two three is eight over three, and so on. So you will get the values of the l and u as this. This is the first method you can find the values of the l and u by using the decomposition. Second method, how you can find the Gauss, how you can find the values of the l and u by using Gauss elimination method, and that method is quite easy for you. Fine. So since we already know how you can convert the matrix A, if you have the matrix A, how you can convert into the upper triangular matrix. We all know by using the Gauss elimination methods. So if if you are unable to remember, you must watch about my this lecture of the Gauss elimination. You can see this is the playlist of the numerical analysis, and you can find the Gauss elimination methods in my channel. Now, what we have learned in this Gauss elimination, we can use the elementary row operations. Fine, like R two minus three times R one, or R three plus one over three times R one, and so on. Fine. Based on these operations, you can find the upper triangular matrix. Also, remember, if you watch my this lecture, I have explained you the shortcut tricks how you can solve this method. how you can compute this value shortcut where this coefficients like of the 3 1 over 3 these are called as the multiply so now my target is to find the value of the l and u this matrix u i can obtain by using the gauss elimination fine and how you can obtain the values of the l that is based on this values of the alpha i j so based on the values of the alpha i j i can write the Lower triangular matrix, but if you are unable to understand how, I will explain you the same example with the help of the numerical example. So that is by using the Gauss elimination. Now, what is the coefficient matrix? Again, your coefficient matrix is this. Then I can start with the Gauss elimination methods. What is your target? Your target is to write this matrix A into the upper triangular matrix. That means. Your target is to make this value as a zero, and this value as a zero. So let's start with this one. How you can make them the first value as a zero? That means you can operate R two minus R two divided by R one. Fine. Similarly, for the R three, you can make as R three minus two over three R. Make sure, student. If this is the R one, it must also be the R one. So what you can do, you can write the first row as such, and this value. I I will explain you how you can compute this value by using the shortcut tricks. Fine. Now my target is to compute these four values. Very easy. The first method you can use this operation like one minus one over three. So it value will be one over three. Similarly, one over three of this. That's three minus one over three. Nine minus one, eight over three. Similarly, you can write as a. This value will be minus one, minus two over three. That is a four over three. It's a minus seven over three. And this value will be six minus two over three. So eighteen minus two. That is a sixteen over three. This is the first method. Second method is instead of writing all these values because you need a huge calculation. What is the shortcut tricks for you? So remember, I will use the first diagonal entries as a box element. If I want to compute this value, you must watch about my this lecture. I am again ask you again and again shortcut tricks. You, if you want to find this value, what is the previous value is six. Now you have to take the three uh, two values zero and six. Find the determinant of this. You have to write the two more values three upper value is my one and this value is. Find the determinant of this value divided by the box element. Make sure you have to start from the box element. So it will be 18 minus 2 divided by box element. So 16 divided by 3. Fine. Similarly, similarly, if you want to find this value, what is the value of this? Previous value is my 1. Other four elements are my these four numbers. 3 minus 2. 3 minus 2 divided by box element. It is one over three. Similarly, if you want to find this value, the previous value is minus one. The other two values are my 
what are the other two values the one is this second is this and other values are my 2 and plus of 2 that is minus of 2 minus of 4 divided by box element fine similarly you can compute this number it says 9 minus 1 8 divided by box L. Now once you have complete this then another what is your target is you have to make this value as a 0 so that means R3 minus how you can write this number that is the R3 this is the R3 divided by R2 R3 divided by R2 it is my minus 7 so it's a plus 7. How you can write that you can write the first row as such second row you can write it as such third row you can write it directly 0 fine then your target is to write this way now since we are using the values of the r2 i can box this element fine what is the previous value of this 16 over 3 i can use these four elements so start from the box element you can multiply them 16 over 9 minus 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 plus 56 over 9 divided by box element so it will be 72 over 9 into 3 over 1. So 3, 3 to your 6, 24. So this value will be my 24. Fine. Now you can see this value is my upper triangular matrix. So my target is to find the value of the L and the value of the U. So this is my U. Fine. By using the Gauss elimination, this value is my u. Now, how you can find this L? Because I use the do little method. What is the value of this? The element is my L21. So this is R2, R1. Compare this value with the alpha. So what is the alpha is minus alpha? That is a 1 over 3. This value is my 1 over 3. Compare this value with what is the element of this? This is my element of 3, 1. So this is the 3, this is the 1, it is my 2 over 3. Compare this value will be minus of alpha is equal to 7 and this element will be L3, 2. This value will be my minus 7. So you can write this value as 1 over 3, 2 over 3. Always compare the values with the Rj minus alpha Ri. So minus of alpha is equal to plus 7, alpha is my minus 7. And you can see... By using the both method that is a decomposition and by using the Gauss elimination you will get the same. Let's do one more example. Now since this method I, because I have used all these L values are my one that is called as the do little methods. So I will try to explain you one more method how you can solve this crowd and the do little. So let's say firstly we can write the coefficient matrix 2 1 2 sorry it's a 2 1 2. Uh, this matrix is wrong. What is the matrix A? This is my 2, 1, 2, 1, 5, 3, 1, 1, minus 1. Fine. Then, then if I use the do little method, then your allies are my 1. If I use the crowd method, then your UII is my 1. Fine. So, let's start with the firstly, do little method. So, remember this matrix is wrong. And this is the correct value. 2, 1, 2, 1, 5, 3, 1, 1, minus. So if I use the do little methods, my target is to write the values in, into the upper triangular form. So how you can do that? I use the Gauss elimination. So what is the values of this? I can write this first element as such and this value as a 0. Can you write this operation? R2 minus R3 minus. So R2 minus something of R1. So the ratio is R2. What is the value of the R2? Divided by R1. So this value is my half. This is R3. What is the value of the R3? 1 divided by R2. Fine. So remember this, this you don't see that. Then how you can compute them? Because the last element is R1. This is my box element. How you can compute this value? It's a 10. It's a 10 minus 1 divided by the box element. So 9 over 2. Can you compute this value? It's a 3, 2 and 1. 6 minus 2. 6 minus 2. That's a 4 divided by box element. This value, previous value is my 1. Box element is 2. So it's a 2 minus 1. 1 divided by box element. 
Similarly, you can write the last value. Previous value is my minus one. Other values are my two and plus one. So it's a minus of two, minus of four, minus two, minus two divided by two is, is minus of two. Otherwise, you can use this operation like, like for example, this case five minus one over two. So it's a ten minus one nine over two. Fine. Now again, how you? What is your target? Your target is to write. First two row as such, then this value as a zero, and this value is so. My target is to write this number. So R three minus something of the R two. What is the ratio? Is R three? What is the value of the R three? Is half divided by R two nine over two. So the answer is one over nine. Fine. Now how you can compute this number? Since my previous number is R two, I can box this value. The previous value is my minus two. I can start with this. Cross multiply minus eighteen over two. That's a minus of nine minus one divided by the box element. So this is my minus of ten into two over nine. So minus twenty divided by nine. Fine. Now therefore my this is my upper triangular matrix. So therefore U is my this case. Can you write the value of the L? Diagonal entries are my one. Upper values are my zero. So what is the value of the this? Is a L two one. L two one. This is my half. L three one is a one over three, and it is my one over nine is the right. And you can also check your answer in your examinations. Once you can multiply this L into U, it must be equal to the matrix A. This is the first method. Now you can solve this same problem. By using the crowd method, so that means your target is to write L I is my one. So that means by using the Gauss elimination method, we can apply the Gauss elimination methods to convert the matrix into the L. Now, since my target is to make upper values as a zero, that means your target is to convert Gauss elimination by using the column matrix. What is the meaning of that? My target is to make these two values as a zero. Then, instead of using R two minus something, I will use the column operations because I am using the crowd method. So, what is the first operation for that? So, you can see my target is to make this number as a zero. So, I can write the first column as such. Fine. So, what is the operation? Is C two minus something of C one, C three minus something of C one, and what is that column two? One is a column two divided by column one. Similarly, column three is a two divided by column one. It is my fine. Now again, your operation are same. I can use what is the previous value is five. Box element is my two. So ten minus one nine divided by box element. Similarly, for this case. Six minus two, six minus two, four, four divided by the box element. Similarly, for this case, one, two minus one, one divided by box element. Minus of two, minus of two divided by box element, minus two. Then the next step is your target is to make this value as a zero. So I can write the first column as such, second column as such. Fine. And your target is to find this value. That's the C three minus something of the C two. What is the C three value? Is my two divided by the C two elements. So that is a four over nine. So can you find this value again? This is my box element. Make sure you have to apply this one. So this number is my minus of nine and minus one divided by box elements. Again, it will be twenty over nine. Fine. So now this is my Lower triangular matrix. So therefore, L is my this matrix. And what is the U? The operations are my half. It's a column. It's a two one. That's a U two one is half. One four over nine is my operation. So you can see that if are using the do little methods, then your L is again. You can see if you multiply L into U, your matrix will be A. If you multiply L into U. Your matrix will be again A. Now, the second objective is how you can find the inverse of the matrix by using the 
LU decomposition. A very simple. As since we have learned how you can write the values of the L and U, then I can substitute this value of L and U into the system. Can you find the value of the X? How you can find the value of the X? So clearly say if I pre-multiply by L inverse on the both side, this is L inverse B, then I can multiply by U inverse on the both side, it's the U inverse, L inverse of B. Fine. Now if you look about this case, what is my X? X is my A inverse B. So if you compare them, what is the inverse of this matrix? Inverse is L inverse U inverse. Now since L and U are my lower and upper triangular matrix, so we can easily find the values of L inverse and U. Since your target is to find the L and U, how? That I have explained you the two method in our previous. Now I will explain you with the help of the numerical example. Look at this example, how you can find the inverse of the matrix. One method is you can use the AX is equal to B. You can find the X is A inverse B. That means you have to find the adjoint of the matrix divided by the determinant. But if your matrix is 5 cross 5, then it is difficult to find for the inverse. It is difficult to find the adjoint A. So that's why LU decomposition is much better. So if you look like say this phase, how you can find it? But believe me, it's a one of the easiest way. Firstly, you can write the matrix A. Fine. Now you can write this matrix. You can decompose this matrix in the form of the L and U. Either by using the decomposition method or by using the gauss seidel method that I explained you previously. So if I apply the do little methods, I will obtain the value of the L and U. And you can see this is the same example I have discussed in previously. Now, by using the LU decomposition, your inverse will be U inverse L inverse. So how you can find the values of the U inverse L inverse? So let's see. Firstly, I will tell you how you can find the L inverse. Make sure student, if we all know if L is my lower triangular matrix, fine. So then what will be my L inverse? L inverse is also lower triangular matrix. Fine. So what does it mean? That means L inverse will also be the lower triangular. So that means these three values must be 0. Fine. How you can find the remaining values? So whatever the elements of this, you can find the reciprocal. For example, if my value is A, B, C, say 7, minus 1, 4, and these values are 0, then what will be the L inverse? The reciprocal of this 1 over A. Diagonal entries are always reciprocal. Fine. So in this particular example, the diagonal entries are my 1. What is the reciprocal of this? Is again 1, 1, 1. How you can find this value of A, B and C? There are the two methods. The first method is because it is a 3 cross 3 matrix and it is very easy. You can find the adjoint of the L and divide it by L factorial. That will give the L inverse. Fine. But I will tell you second method that is much easier than of this. I will choose the unknown numbers as A, B and C. And we all know what is the property of the L and L inverse. It is always identity. So I can substitute the value of the L and L inverse in this expression. Fine. This is my L. This is my L inverse which is identity. Then I can equate the coefficients. That's a very simple because it's a lower triangular. I need the value of the A, B, C. So I can compare the coefficients of lower triangular matrix. So can you compare this value? This value is my 0. That is L, second row, first column. So what is the element of this second row, first column? Second row, first column. So if you multiply them, it's a half plus A plus 0 is my 0. Similarly, so can you... Similarly, for this value, third row, first column, it is my half, it is a over 9 plus b is equal to 0. Similarly, for this value, third row, second column, so that's a 0, 1 over 9 plus c is equal to 0. Fine. So you will obtain these three values. Clearly say, you will get the value of a as minus half, 
from this case c is equal to minus 1 over 9 i can substitute the value of the a in this expression you will get the value of the b as minus 4 over 9 so therefore what is my l inverse i can substitute this value minus b is my minus 4 over 9 c is my minus 1 over 9 and so similarly i can compute the value of the u inverse because what is the value of the u u is my 2 so that because again it's a upper triangular matrix so the inverse of this is also upper triangular matrix the diagonal entries are my reciprocal of this it is 2 over 9 and it is minus 9 over 20 so your target is to find only these three numbers a b and c again i can use the same property u into u inverse is identity or you can use the factor of a joint of u divided by u factorial but that method is quite easy because you can easily compute the values you can see my target is to compare these three numbers so what is the number of this first row second column first row second column that is a 2a plus 2 over 9 is equal to 0 this number is first row third column first row third column twice of b plus of c minus 9 over 10 which is 0 this element will be second row third column second row third column 0 b 9 over 2 into c minus 9 over 10 is equal to g now based on these three expressions you can find the value of the a from this expression you can find the value of the b sorry c and i can substitute the value of the c at this point you will get the value of the b finally i can substitute the value of the a b and c you will get the l inverse so therefore what is the inverse of this matrix u inverse l inverse once we know the u inverse once we know the l inverse i can multiply this matrix you can multiply this matrix first row first column first row second column and so on you will get this is the required answer of this problem and you can also see if you have the matrix a you can find the adjoint of this matrix divided by the determinant of a you will get the same answer of this problem and you can see it's a very very simple approach for finding the lu decomposition method we will see some more examples how you can solve the lu decomposition more in our next lecture till then you can simply like share and comment on my video best of luck students happy learning all